Well, here we are again with another episode of Catholic Synod Watch. I'm your host, Hank Idgeter, and with me is my cohort, uh, Herman, Herman Udik. Oh, I've, right. I've uh, been elevated to a cohort. I, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're in the big time now. So, uh, I, I went from co-conspirator to cohort in a matter of seconds. That's awesome. That, yep. Well, we we got important stuff to discuss, so we we got to you know get the rank structure uh, straight. But uh, as uh, Mrs. Idgeter would uh, uh, say, in fact, as she said, uh, uh, Paka Mama now sleeps with the fishes. She didn't say it slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she didn't say it like that. Of course, that's not that's not what what, what uh, Mrs. Idgeter sounds like. But uh, yeah, just you know the fact that it took place in Italy it just seemed fitting. But yeah, uh, so uh, so my neighbor's kids came home from school today and they were singing this new song I'd never heard it before, but it actually kind of blends in well here. Would you like to hear it? Why, sure. Or just maybe maybe one verse because it does get rather annoying <clears throat> if you go through all of them. But it's 99 Pacamamas sitting on the bridge. 99 Pacamamas. <laughs> oh, God. And down here it goes splash. 98 Pacamamas on the bridge. They, they really... You've got these are the neighbor kids. They must be very. <laughs> oh, it was be, hilarious. They must be hilarious, yet somehow maybe slightly tedious. But uh, oh, okay. wow, well. <laughs> yes, I, I had to throw that in there. It didn't really happen. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. They, okay. They, if that was an apocryphal story, got it. But uh, yeah, the, the those uh, those two men. Uh, I don't know how many other guys were involved, but. Uh, they are uh, Catholic heroes in my book because they they got rid of a pagan idol that was uh, that was polluting uh, a Catholic church, uh, polluting the house of God. And is there is there any debate at all as to what these things are? That there can be there can be no debate at all, Hank. I mean, this is in fact we have the Vatican on record now two times declaring that. It is, in fact, although there was some speculation in the beginning that it's some some indigenous people's interpretation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we now have the Vatican who has come out two times and said, in fact, it is not that it does represent this Pacamama. Uh, and as we know, anybody, it's very simple to Google it, go to Wikipedia, whatever your whatever your choice is. But Pacamama is clearly a, uh, it's an indigenous people's pagan idol, and it's native to the peoples of the Br Brazilian rainforest. It is an idol. Let me be clear. It is an idol. In fact, the, uh, when the uh, Vatican's uh, minister of propaganda made that, that was just a wimpy statement uh, uh, condemning the thievery of, the, uh, of these guys. Uh, that, was, that was not a strong argument that he was making. Well, I did hear that as I was uh, commuting earlier today. I heard I heard that statement. Uh, actually, it was a repeat of a statement he had made yesterday. But but he's going on and on about the theft, the theft of this uh, in, indigenous people and how insensitive we are to the indigenous peoples that uh, we're trying to pro, uh, uh, preclude any dialogue, openness and dialogue with these people. You know, and, and he's going on about the theft theft and the fact that it was stolen and and i get it that's you know maybe in his way of thinking this is paolo paolo uh, ruffini we're speaking of i could see how maybe in his way of thinking this is a violation of the seventh commandment and we might have <laughs> to the, those of us who are celebrating it and the two who did it uh, might have to go confess uh, uh for sins against the seventh commandment but he seems to be forgetting one of the commandments that precedes the seventh and for those of us who do believe uh, as is intended, that there is a hierarchical order, a order of precedence to the Ten Commandments. There's something that comes before seven. I'm not, I can't quite put my finger on it, but I think yeah. there is one there that might might take priority. Okay, we've got a lot of people who might be uh, victims of public education, so they might be math challenged. But a number that comes before seven could be the number I one. One, yeah, yeah, one does. Hey, it would might be that first commandment. I am the Lord your God, and you shall have no false gods before me. What don't you get about that? Listen up, right. people of the Vatican. If you are listening right now, to how many people listen to the podcast normally? 
Well, we're, we're, you know, on YouTube, we've got almost 200 and on the podcast itself, we're bumping up against like nine, nine listeners. So yeah, okay, well, hold on. I'll get back to my train of thought in a minute, but of those nine, I've got to confess three of them are me. Okay. So okay. I've got three different accounts. Great. Great. Okay, so we're down to six maybe, but anyway, going back to, uh, <laughs> going back to, uh, Paolo and this ridiculous, Paolo, uh, Paolo Ruffini and this ridiculous charge that we violated the seventh commandment. I think he tends to forget that the first commandment is a priority. And if we're to live according to the first commandment, uh, we shall not worship those false and pagan gods. And uh, we have a duty to expunge them, to remove them from sacred places of worship. Yeah, and so even, if, even if the uh, – yeah, absolutely. And even if the idol is cheesy, I mean, that still doesn't excuse you. I mean, well, it's – Did you have to go there? Cheesy. I did. Yeah, it, yeah, those were pretty low rent looking uh, graven Honestly, images. I, I wasn't yeah. going to say it, but I'm glad you did. Somebody had to, but somebody had to. Do you think that, like the regular Catholics out there, not the people who are obsessed with all this uh, stuff online, but just the regular? I'm going to Sunday to my Novus Ordo Mass. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, receiving the sacraments. I'm listening to the homilies. I, are they waking up to this? No, that's really that's a really good question. In fact, uh, I, I can speak to that because just last night, somebody who I love dearly, who who is, uh, you know, a Novus Ordo, every Sunday mass goer and and um, a practical Catholic for all purposes, all intents here, uh, she approached me and said, "Hey, what is it with these?" What is it with this Pacamama? She had really not been paying attention with the whole Vatican Synod, really maybe knew that something was going on in the Vatican. But then again, when is there not something going on in the Vatican? Uh, but anyway, yeah. so so really wasn't clued into what was going on in the Vatican Synod. And then a friend of hers uh, texted her last night to say, hey, did you see the video of the Pacamamas going splash? So, of course, uh, it led to a discussion and we got into it and. And this is from your average Sunday churchgoer, uh, not a traditionalist by any means, uh, not into the interwebs looking for information on the church. But uh, the thing that hit me quite profoundly was she's like, why did these things, why were they even allowed in a Catholic church? And, and she applauded the fact that they were thrown into the River Tiber. Well, that's the $64,000 question. There's $64,000 that aren't coming from the Ford Foundation. Uh, right, or, indeed. In fact, my, but, my response to her was you know, my only regret. I'm glad, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm glad they were removed and thrown into the river. My only regret is that uh, they weren't burned uh, right down to the ashes, and then those ashes returned to the Vatican in a World Mission Sunday envelope. Oh. That's how I would have executed that mission. That would have been sweet, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, unfortunately they they they're uh, but they have gotten the deep six, and um, I know in Rome, in ancient Republican Rome, there was a rock called the Tarpeian Rock, and that was the uh, the place they uh, if there was a traitor, they would hurl them off the rock into the Tiber. So mm -hmm. uh, these idols inside of our uh, our holy uh, churches was definitely a betrayal of the faith and. Uh, being tossed into the Tiber is a is a fitting end for them. So, and they are bio, they are biodegradable. And who knows? They're out bobbing in the in the Mediterranean now. Maybe a few years they'll wash ashore somewhere, and you'll have a really interesting piece of driftwood. Indeed. Well, well. Hey, I know we're we're getting short on time, but I just wanted to point out two different things here. Actually, all in the same. So, so those of us who have been following this and been concerned with the Vatican Synod, of course, this. This brings a measure of joy to us uh, uh, just to see that there is a remnant of the one true faith remaining in Rome. And that remnant became apparent, what, 36 hours ago now? Yeah, uh, when, when, we, when we heard of the splash and we saw the video to back it up. So, of course, we were cheering, but, but what, what gives me even more hope is that I've now seen three bishops, uh, one from the Netherlands, one from Brazil itself, and then, of course, there's one here in America. And I'm not talking about Cardinal Burke or uh, Bishop Schneider, but these are three names that probably many people have, heard of, have not heard of before, but three bishops have spoken out uh, to, the, uh, 
to what's characterized as, and this is a quote from one of the bishops, and this would be the bishop from the Netherlands, a uh, bishop by the name of, uh, he's a Dutch bishop, Bishop Mutseritz, and I know I butchered his name, but it's M-U-T-S-A-E-R-T-S. -E he says, what's going on on the Amazon Synod is, quote, the most politically correct meeting of all time. Politically correct meeting of all time. Oh, he's boy. voicing the hidden agenda. He's voicing concern over the hidden yep. agenda. I don't really think it's that hidden anymore. No, no, they're they're pretty much run their colors up the uh, the mass there for everybody to see. And um, yeah, it's I, I, it's it's coming to the to the point where uh, where faithful Catholics are going to have to uh, to make a decision and they're going to have to take a stand and. Uh, those, those couple of guys, uh, the, the guys who did this in Italy, we got ourselves a couple of Maccabees and, uh, oh, indeed we do. So, so one more point, And if I can ex extend, uh, the time you bought here, I know you bought a limited amount of time cause we're not resourced very well here, but I'll, no, I'll you can take all the time you want. The cool thing is, is there's absolutely no way we can be demonetized cause we're not earning any money to begin with. So take oh, nice. Okay. Take, well, take people... that left wing internet. Yeah, people tune in. We're going to be here for a while then. Um, one more point, and this goes back to the bishops who are speaking out. So we know that there is an Austrian bishop who's been in in the uh, rainforest for 30 years, and rather than converting the natives, I think they've done a good job converting him, and that would be Bishop Krautler oh. uh, from Austria. This guy uh, is a real, well, let's just say we need to pray for him. Uh but but if you really want to hear from a Brazilian bishop, I mean a true Brazilian Brazilian bishop, look to Bishop Jose Luis Ascona, emeritus of um, Marijo in the Am Amazon Delta area, and he came out in his words, and I am going to quote him again, and I have to credit LifeSite News for this one. He said uh, he called the syncret um, syn syncretist liturgies being proposed in the Amazon Synod, quote, a point of scandal for the entire church. Um, he gets it. Yeah. He gets it. Yeah. And, and for those, uh, for, for our listeners here, the, when we, you hear the word syncretism or syncretic, what they're talking about is a, a blending of, uh, of two religions. So you're blending elements of paganism uh, with the the true faith of Catholicism, and that is not a mixture that works well. I mean, it's like it's like you know, adding a pinch of paganism to the uh, to the one true faith is like adding a little pinch of dog poop to your brownie recipe. I mean, how much dog poop would you tolerate in the brownie you were eating? And I'm guessing, what kind of dog was it? No. <laughs> 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 would that really matter <laughs> i'm just teasing of course yeah uh, well hey uh, so so a little bit more you know we look through the ages going back yeah we cannot end this talk on dog poop going, going Go back centuries uh back 2000 year history of our church uh father longenecker many of our listeners might be familiar with father dwight longenecker uh he wrote an article and he published it on his blog on October 19th, uh, could have been the 18th or 19th. The point being, it was before the big splash. And the title of the article is The Amazon Synod and 10 Learning Points from St. John de Bro um, Brebeuf. Uh, of that, course, the Jesuit, the Jesuit the guy. The Jesuit, right? So the Jesuit and his companions who, who ventured at a very, uh, um, well, who ventured to North America at a time when the climate was incredibly hostile to anything foreign. And they were clearly foreign, uh, the Native Americans at that time, foreign and hostile. Uh, and they, uh, in, in the end, we know, you know, they were martyred for their faith. But there's this article by Father Longenecker, again, the 10 learning points that can be learned from uh, from these true missionaries, the, the people who did not sacrifice their faith um, to, um, to satisfy the indigenous people, but the ones who led the indigenous people by their example to their faith. 
And it, yes, yes, they were, they, they indeed uh, were martyred for their faith. However, those Native Americans who witnessed the martyrdom, many of them converted because these martyrs died for their faith. That led to the conversion of a great many of them. And that's, that's the power. I mean, that's the power of being a faithful witness. And shocker of shockers, uh, Father uh, Brebeuf and, and, and Isaac Jogue, who were they? They were Jesuits. They were Ooh, they what? were black robes. Yeah, Jesuits. They're, they're Jesuits. What? But yep. That's not what I've come to learn about Jesuits. No, they're... no. In fact, it's just <laughs> the opposite. Yeah. Well, don't don't pay attention to many of the. You know, and I, I hate to say that because believe it or not, there are a few good Jesuits out there uh, who still who still practice and believe in the faith. Unfortunately, those with the microphone, those with the loudest voices are the ones who are uh, just have abandoned the faith, the one true faith. Yep. Yep. That's so true. People were upset about that picture of the uh, of the indigenous uh, lady who was uh, nursing a baby and at the same time nursing an animal. And there was speculation whether it was a uh, dog or a piglet or a lot of people were thinking it was a weasel early on. It uh, did not end up being a weasel, but. Even if it had been, those that is not the weasel you need to be worrying about, fellow Catholics. We got plenty of weasels running around in the hierarchy now, and and a bunch of these weasels are, are at the Amazon Synod now. And so we've got to pray for them, and we've got to ask Our Lady to intervene here and uh, and clean the house, which uh, she's certainly uh, good at doing. So I guess we'll end our. Uh, I guess we'll end our broadcast there. So we've uh, we've covered a lot of ground, but uh, please pay attention to what's going on. Your your faith is at stake, and the salvation of souls is at stake. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thanks. Okay. <laughs>